that takes input from their eyes and feeds it through their brain to a motor output. So this is a completely autonomous robot. We don't tell them what to do ahead of time. They do it on their own. Long programs the robots to find food, here represented as light, as fast as possible. Stay in the light as long as possible and avoid predators. Like sharks or marlins, Long's robots can never stop swimming. After each set of trials, Long chooses the successful to mate, using them as the basis for the next generation's design, its evolution in a fish tank. Now, it's not just being fast. It's also staying away from the predator, and it's also eating food. So speed is placed in the context of a complex ecology of survival. After 10 generations of robot evolution, long pits soft and stiff against one another, hoping to witness for the first time how the bony spine won out. All right, Marianne, if you want to turn off the lights. Round one, soft spine robot. Look, here we go. This is a very flexible tail. Now it looks like he's going back towards the light. See if he gets back in there. The soft-spined robot is slow, but accurate. Throughout the three-minute trial, it hugs the circle of light closely. Will the bony spine do better? Round two, hard-spine robot. With the vertebrae in here, in the tail, it looks like it overshoots the light source. Less flexible, the stiff back has more power, but it's less accurate. Speedy individuals tend to overshoot the food source. Sometimes speed is bad. Being fast can cost you. If speed leads to tougher feeding, why did the soft backs largely die out? The difference shows up when Long recreates what happened in the Cambrian explosion, the introduction to the environment of predators. The predator's job is to find the prey and try to eat it. Round three, soft spine robot hunt. Ready, go. Come on, predator. Show us what you got. So what we have going on right now is the prey robot is swimming straight towards the light, but it's just detected the predator and has initiated a fast start. So it's saying, I can't eat right now. I got to get out of the way. But now it's turning around to come back into the light. Meanwhile, the predator is saying, no, you don't. I've got you. Obviously, our robots are not eating each other. That would be really expensive and kind of messy. The soft spine is too slow to survive. And the bony spine? Round four, bony spine robot hunt. So this is really dramatic. Now that we have the prey with vertebrae, the predator hasn't gotten anywhere near. Man, the predator's just really overmatched here. Even though the bony spine robot is less accurate in its movement, power and speed win out. Long's robots show that the bony spine is a powerful adaptation for survival. Speed is really critical. And you've got to be faster than your predator. And the essential key to speed? A bony back. The stiffer, the better. The backbone seems like it should just be a thing that everything else is just attached to. But that's not what a backbone fundamentally is about. A backbone gives you a stiff rod. That lets you be very, very strong as you move through the environment. All the fastest fishes today have very stiff backbones. A slow, wriggling eel has over 100 tiny backbones, while the speedy sailfish has just 30 larger, longer vertebrae. A stiff back is the central ingredient for speed, but it can't do it alone. Next step, add plenty of muscle. The first time we see what we would recognize as muscle in the fossil record is in fishes. And the muscle that is inside those prehistoric fishes is fundamentally the same stuff that we have in our bodies today. To backbones and muscles, add a biological body built for speed. They need to have a streamlined body shape. And one of the things we find is a teardrop-shaped body evolve in the really fast fish, and also a big, wide tail. Backbone, muscle, body shape, and powerful tail. All the ingredients came together in the sailfish, the fastest swimmer in the ocean. 
But not every sea creature evolved a backbone. Many thrive as successful predators using speed in a completely different way, as a weapon. Whether or not an animal is fast isn't just limited to how it moves around in the environment. There's also how fast it can perform certain activities. An animal might be relatively slow moving around, but when it strikes at its prey, it's lightning fast. At the same time backbones were appearing, another adaptation would begin to evolve. One that would translate speed into the most powerful knockout punch on the planet. What's survive with minimal propulsion?